said amen. amen as you greet one another this morning make it genuine and make it real say good morning to each other
Oh, I want to welcome you all this morning as we thank God for the day. It is a pleasure at the eight, 11 o'clock service. <laughs> the 11 o'clock service. We're not live yet, are we, on the internet? Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay, so. But as we come this morning, it is a pleasure as we celebrate the sacrament of baptism. And it, I would like to invite. Uh, Nathan, uh, as you come, oh, and his wife, and the little one, oh my goodness, as they, we have the certificate, whoop, certificate, and we have a little certificate and a special little Bible. And big sister, oh wow, okay. Oh, that's good. What you can come, you can come over a little bit. There you go. Wow, that's a pretty dress. Yeah. Huh. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, I love it. Right. <laughs> as we come, I want to just say, uh, as as mom and dad, and as a family. Baptism is an outward and a visible sign of the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through which grace we become partakers of his righteousness and heirs of life eternal. Those receiving the sacrament are marked as disciples. They're initiated into the fellowship of Christ's holy church. Our Lord has expressly given to children a place among the people of God. As remember how Jesus said, let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Mom and dad, in presenting your child for holy baptism, you confess your own faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If so, we do. We do. You therefore accept as a duty, but also a privilege, to live before your child a life that becomes the gospel, exercising all care to be brought up in the Christian faith and taught the holy scriptures and learn to give reverent attendance upon private and public worship of God. If so, we do. we do. All right. Will you endeavor to keep her under the ministry and the guidance of the church until by the power of God she'll accept for herself the gift of salvation and be confirmed as a full and responsible member of Christ's holy church? If so, we will. We do. All right. Very good. And her full name? Logan Kendall Brooks. Hi, you. Oh, there you go. I understand. Logan Kendall Vos, you love your daddy, that's okay. <laughs> Logan Kendall Vos, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, praying God's blessings upon you now and forevermore. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. There you go. Church family, as we just thank God for the little, lo, Logan, what's your name? Logan Kendall, as we thank God for Logan Kendall, let's take a moment and bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for Logan, and thank you for her family, and for your blessings upon her now and always. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. 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 Church family, if you're able, if you would stand at this time as we join them and welcome little Logan into our church family. We so order our lives after the example of Christ, that should not surround us steadfast love, shall be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened into the way to life eternal. Amen. We have a tradition that we've started. We have a toddler's Bible and a baptismal certificate, and we want to give that to little Logan, your mom and dad. So God bless and welcome to our church family. Thank you. Welcome them. Can you help? Perfect. Amen. Well, good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We want to say welcome to church today, and especially if it is your first time here 
We want to welcome you with a, a gift after service. has a lot of information about the church, so be sure to go to the welcome desk on your way out. But right now, I'm going to invite everyone to look for the attendance pad. Each row has a black folder. We do want to connect with you, so if you would fill that out, send that right down, and then you guys can send it right back the row. This would be a great time to do that. Also, drawing your attention to the connect cards in the pews. Should you have prayer requests or visitation requests or just any questions or notes you'd like to pass our way, please do fill those out and drop those in the offering plate in a little while. So tonight, there's a lot happening. We are kicking off a lot of different classes, and um, those are all listed in your bulletin. But I just want to draw your attention to the Children's Choir which starts tonight at 5.30. You can drop off your kids, though, at 5 if you are going to attend a class. We have parenting classes that start tonight and a whole bunch of other things. So look in the bulletin for that. But next Sunday, we are kicking off our church-wide Bible study and series for Lent. Because guess what? Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday. Did you know that? hard to believe but we will be starting with services right here at 6 30 and we do have child care um, some of our life groups are going to begin this week there's one on monday night if you don't have one um, on campus at 6 30 but we want to help connect you this is our last sunday to really put you in a group of people that maybe share your season of life or your location or your passion for whatever it is you want to gather with a smaller group of people. So when service is over, if you can go to the table along the wall back there, if you're new and you had signed up for a life group, you should be in a group back there. So find your name, let us know if we can share your information. And this week, we're going to have you guys call each other and get started. If you'd like to add your name to a list, please do do so in the back um, because we're excited to start those as well. But right now, the biggest connection is to connect with Jesus Christ who's right here with us. So let us get our hearts prepared to go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow before you this morning to thank you. Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for your love that never, ever ends or goes away. That you love us unconditionally. Lord, maybe there are times or maybe there are people in this room right now that are feeling distant. Lord, you are right here with us. And you never leave us or forsake us. And in fact, Lord, you designed us to be in relationship with you and with others. And it's through our connections with other people, these intimate relationships in which we can feel your presence the most. Even, Lord, as you came to this earth yourself, you modeled in your most human way the need for intimate relationships. So Lord, we thank you and pray that each one of us here would find our tribe, that we would find the ones that you are calling for us to share life with. For that is your design, that is your purpose and plan. And we pray, Lord, that we would fall into that plan the way you've designed it to be. And so, Lord, as we come now, it's with grateful hearts, with sincere hearts, with a 
wonderful blessing that we don't have to be alone, that we can even pray with the body of Christ together. So in that, Lord, we pray out loud with others the way you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to welcome, we have our new members who will be joining this morning, and we had them all morning long, and at 11, Brenda Singletary, Brenda, uh, I saw you earlier, yes, come on up, if you would, and she's come, with, she has her family there, uh, we want to say welcome, we had Marilyn Schwartz, who was also uh, Pastor Derek's sister, who was in town, and uh, uh, she joined at 8 o'clock because she was supposed to come at 11, but she joined at 8 because she had to get into the children's ministry helping there. <laughs> How cool was that? So, but as we come, I want to say welcome to Brenda. So glad you're here. And honestly, as we shared in our class, how just the privilege of how God has brought us all here, that it's not by accident, but it's his intention and design. So I want to say welcome as we come. So as we shared in the class, and as you stand here, do you repent of your sin and confess your own faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? If so, I do. I do. All right. And Brenda, because you have never been baptized in your profession of faith. So at this time, your full name? Brenda Carol Singletary. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, praying God's blessings upon you now and forevermore. Amen and amen. As you stand, we also, do you, as we continue, do you accept for your own faith in Christ, will you now seek to grow in love as you learn to obediently follow him? If so, I do. Will you connect with others as you grow in fellowship opportunities and as you now belong to Christ's holy church? If so, I will. Amen. Will you grow in Christ and seek to reflect his character in all areas of your life as you grow in your knowledge and understanding of him? If so, I will. All right. Will you seek to discover ways to serve your Lord in all areas of your life as you faithfully participate in the ministries of the church? If so, I will. All right, and now as you grow in Christ, will you accept your own responsibility to be a witness to help lead others to Christ? If so, I will. Amen. As you commit to follow him, will you now be faithful to Christ through this body of believers called First United Methodist Church of Claremont? Will you be faithful through your own prayers, your presence, your generosity, your serving, and your witness? If so, I will. Amen. Church family, as you're able, if you would stand together as Brenda makes her profession of faith and her commitment to Christ and us as a body of believers, let's join together as we say, now as members together in the body of Christ, we make our covenant to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers our presence, our generosity, our serving, and our witness that in everything we do, God would be glorified by the power and grace of God. Our ultimate desire is to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Brenda, for this day, and for your blessings upon her life. Lord, we rejoice every time a heart surrenders to you. As heaven is rejoicing, we do as well. 
We thank you and praise you. Bless her and all of us as a church family in your holy name. Be honored and glorified. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Welcome to our church family, Brenda. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. As we thank God for the day and ushers as you prepare to come forward, it is a pleasure. It is an honor as we had that crazy big concert, the singing and celebrating and giving a few weeks ago. You guys remember that? Two weeks ago? Yeah, remember that? You guys remember that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it is. We're trying to raise funds for Find, Feed, and Restore. It is the community organization that's out there that is helping people get out of their cars and tents and start living in trailers and places with coaching, mentoring, guiding, get back on your feet and following Jesus and just way cool. Anyway, after the funds kept coming in, this is above and beyond our budget and giving and what we're about to give, way above that. The total has now surpassed $25,000. God is good. And all the time. God is good. Praise God. Oh, my goodness. So I uh, just, way, way, way cool. And, and I had a guy in the community stop me and said, you know, that was like pretty cool what, what the church did. And I said, it's not us. It's God. And that's where he goes, we could get other churches. To do. I said, that's our goal, that we could absolutely stop homelessness and get rid of it in South Lake County. That would be huge. So that's our goal. That one of the many goals for the, for the glory of God. Uh, also, for those of you that volunteer, you volunteer in the church doing different stuff. You, as a volunteer, are invited to dinner March 3rd. Mark the calendar. If you got kids, register them in child care. But come out because we're going to have a party for you. I can tell the excitement's in the room. <laughs> anyway, volunteer, we want to see you. As the ushers, as we worship God now, as we give with grateful and generous hearts, let's thank God as we give back to him.
almighty God, we come before you to present to you our tithes and our offerings. Be honored, be glorified as you receive these gifts and pour upon your blessings on it all. We love you, we praise you, we thank you. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, a good morning to all of you and so glad you are here. So, so glad I'm here. <laughs> it's good to be here. If you just walked in for the first time, welcome. If you're a family, you're here, you're checking it out, welcome to church. If you come here pretty much every week, welcome. Glad you all are here. We are basically a regular church for a traditional United Methodist Church. Anybody and everybody is welcome. We don't pretend to be something we're not. This is who we are. We honor God. We're honest to God. We're honest with ourselves, and we're honest with other people. There you go. Welcome to church. So as we come, and, and they see it's important because we're all, we all, including myself, are learning, growing, and trying to practice and live what it means to be a follower of Jesus in today's world in the culture, in the country, in the world for which we live. So as we come, I just am, again, I say I'm grateful for one reason. I uh, was with my mom last week, and I learned a couple things. Uh, first of all, I, 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 I didn't learn she's amazing. She's always amazing, and I need to show you a quick picture because I took a picture. <laughs> there she is, and I have multiple layers of clothing on, and uh, <laughs> And so, you know, I mean, I, I learned that my body cannot handle 12 degrees anymore. <laughs> or lower when the wind's blowing. Anyway, so, but thank God for the man or the woman, whoever invented long underwear. <laughs> uh, that's brilliant. So anyway, so. Uh, can I say that in church? I guess you can. <laughs> anyway, so. But I do want to say, as I was talking to my mom, she's in a, a nursing home uh, facility, and as she's there, it, it's, it's, it's difficult, because she was, she's very sharp and alert, and she was once at home, and now she's not. And we talked about the transition, and how it can be a lonely place. Because a lot of times, people at 93, uh, it's harder to communicate with. And so here she is, and she's sitting there, you know, and she said, you know, if I'm going to live here, I've got to make friends. So I've got to take that energy and that effort to meet and, and have a friend and, and make friends. And so, and honestly, that's, that's what she's doing. And so I'm like, really, I was really quite proud of her. Actually, well, I'm always proud of her, you know. But as we, um, I was thinking about that. Because of the effort and the time that it takes to make friends, Anytime there's transition and moving and wherever, how, how do you do it? Do you take time to make friends? In fact, let's talk about church. How many of you have been here for over 10 years? Anybody? You've been here for over 10 years. Okay. How about uh, the five years? Anybody over five years? You've been here over five years? All right. How about just within one or two years? Anybody? Well, one or two years. Oh, wow. Quite a few. As all. And the reason I say and I have you ask the difference because no matter how long you've been here, you can come, you can sing, you can worship, and you can go home. But unless you take the effort to meet someone and connect with someone, you can get lost in the crowd. And you can even find yourself feeling alone, even in a crowd. And in fact, one of the things that our culture struggles with the most right now is that feeling alone. So here's the irony. If you've ever felt alone, you're not alone. <laughs> Everybody has at one time or another or continues to feel alone. In fact, it was such a big deal in Britain a couple of years ago that when they assigned their government agencies, they assigned what's called a minister over or a minister for loneliness. He was, that was, the, it was a public health issue in Great Britain to where they needed this guy to come up with plans how people could not be lonely and connect. So it's very interesting. In fact, Henry Nouwen, one of the most incredible authors, pastors, guys, 
He wrote, loneliness is one of the most universal sources of human suffering today. It's personal, solitary confinement. Nobody is immune to it. In fact, even pastors, you know, any of us. We're, in fact, I have uh, my covenant group uh, will be meeting this coming week. Uh, but one of them uh, had a friend in Arkansas who was a retired pastor of a, just a humongous church. And he was asking him how he liked his retirement and all that. And he said, well, I, I love the church. I love the people and all that. But I, but I got to tell you, ministry, and this is in, in just in honesty, he said ministry gave him the illusion of friendship. I thought that was quite interesting. You see, the challenge for us today and in, in, in our culture is the illusion of friendship. Oh, these people, all these things. And, and I'm, I'm not going to beat up social media but I'm going to say, a lot of times, how many of you have Facebook friends? Anybody? Oh, my gosh. This is the most responsive group that has. Uh, I don't know. You have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You have Facebook friends. Pretty much in today's world, if you have a pulse, you have a Facebook friend. But anyway, so here's the deal. Facebook friends, and all those are apps of finding friends, and you can have friends and all that stuff. That can create the illusion of friendship. And what I mean by that is when I'm talking about friends, and we're going to get into true friends in a minute, but when you think of your, all your friends, and, and as you look at this, uh, how many of you ever you go, you go to the doctor and you fill out the forms and you got you know, all this stuff, you know, and it's like you always have to go early and you wish you'd gone earlier because it takes forever and, and then they keep handing you form. Anyway, sorry, there's, <laughs> I have issues around that. <laughs> anyway. So, so you're filling out the form, and then there's always this little box off to the side that says emergency contact number. And so you're sitting there looking at it like, okay, who do I put for beyond spouse? Because you usually throw in the spouse for those who are married. But emergency contact number other than spouse or family. Who do you put in that line? And how many of your Facebook friends are eligible for that box? Yeah, there you go. You think about it. And you think about, because that's what I want to talk about. Because there's, there was a guy, uh, Craig Rochelle, when we do our leadership summit in August, uh, we're going to be doing another one this year, and it's just incredible speakers will be there and stuff. It's really cool. But Craig is a pastor of what's called Life Church. And if you ever had this, what's called the Bible app, that comes from Life Church. And so he's like crazy number, 40, 50,000 people every weekend all connected. The guy, the guy's, he's, he's a really neat guy. But he wrote this because he leverages social media better than anybody for Jesus. And it's just really cool. But he wrote this. The more I get involved in social media, the more I crave intimate, personal depth in my relationships. Social media is a supplement, not a replacement for friendships quite interesting. Now, the illusion of friendships, and for us with our busy, crazy schedules, and the hurt, woundedness, and brokenness in our own lives is like a perfect storm for loneliness. And I'm not with this series, we're not just going through a series, so it's a church program of connect and belong, and this is for you to build relationships that are real and they're lasting. For men, women, however long you've been here, that's why we're doing this. And that's what this is about. Because God created us to have relationships and be in relationships. Here we go. I had to read Genesis chapter 1. And I love this. This is, this is like really cool. Genesis chapter 1. Uh, and then let's read it together. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed, and morning came, and marked the sixth day. God looked upon creation. It is good. It is good. The good is not what we think of as morally type good. Yes, that is part of the definition, but it's so much broader and bigger Good and very good mean complete. I have created, it is complete. It lacks nothing. It has everything it needs. 
And then in chapter 2, when we get into more specifics of God creating man, and I love verse 7. Then let's read this together. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils. And the man became a I, I, I love that. Leave, leave that up for a minute. You're from the dust and breathe into your nostril the breath of life. Isn't that a cool image? You ever wonder or struggle with life? Think of the one who created you and breathes life into you. And maybe today you need a fresh wind of the Spirit in your life. Continue on. Down in verse seven, uh, 18, let's read together. Then the Lord God said... It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. I will, it is not good. It is not good. It is not, he is not complete. He is not complete all in himself. He needs the relationship. And this is where it created Eve. It's not good for him to be alone. Maybe you need to hear that. It is not good for you, child of God, to be alone. A couple of weeks ago and throughout this whole series, we've been talking about the benefits of healthy relationships and how they add to our lives and how we live longer with healthy relationships. So when you think about this, the whole value and importance of having honest, healthy, true friendships and relationships, this is a big deal. It's a really big deal. The God created us for this. And I love how Solomon writes in um, chapter 18, verse 24, Let's read this one together. Some friends play at friendship, but a true friend sticks closer than one's nearest kin. I, I love that. How many of you have ever had a friend closer than a family member? Anybody? Yeah, wow. You think about it. You think about it, that depth of friendship. And that's what I want to focus on, and that's what I want to look at. What it means to have that true friend that person who's real, that select group, that no hesitation, they go in the box, emergency contact number, boom, put them there. I know they'll answer the call. Now, let's, uh, let's talk about this because we all need these close friends. Some of us have more than others. Some of us are more introverted than extroverted. For example, introverted people. How, who, who's introverted? Raise your hand. Just kidding. I love that. <laughs> oh, you're introverts. You're like dying. Like, what do I do? Why do I have to raise my hand? I don't want to do that. No. I'm messing with you. Forgive me, please. <laughs> Introvert. Here we go. So what do you do to recharge your batteries, introverted people? You like to be alone. There you go. You like to be alone. Give me a book. I'll be off on my own. Ah, you recharge your batteries. So your select group, the emergency contact number, your group most likely will be a smaller group than those who are more extroverted. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just you are more content with a smaller group than the extrovert. Now, for all those of you are extrovert, don't raise your hand. You've been dying to raise your hand. You can't wait to raise your hand. Just get over it. Because you who, who how do you recharge your battery? You recharge it with people. You need other people and your batteries get all recharged, you get cranked up. And, and it's like, you know, so your group of more close inner circle, put them in the box, you may have a few more. There's nothing wrong with either, it's just your choice. And it's having those relationships, which is critical. So when you ask yourself, who is in that inner circle, who are those close personal friends, and... How do I find others, new, new friends? Now, this sweet little lady named Burl, Burl was in her 90s 30 years ago. So Burl has long since been with Jesus, but she said, if you want to be a friend, this is a lady in our little country church, she goes, you, you want to have a friend, you need to be one. And I thought, this is brilliant. I wrote it down. 
So here I am, 35 years later, quit quoting her. You want to have a friend? Be one. What does that mean to be one? What does it mean to not be a, a casual illusion of a friend, but a real, genuine friend? So let's look at it. As Christ followers, how can we be that friend and have that friend? What does that relationship look like? First of all, a true follower of Christ in our true friendships means we are committed. We're committed to the other person. Now, the bunch of uh, elementary kids were asked, what is it, to a true friend? And all these little kids, they said, well, a true friend is one that you can count on them. They're going to be there, and you can depend on them. It's pretty cool for elementary kids. Well, what would you say? It's one who's committed. They're committed to you. You are committed to them. I had the story of David and Jonathan in the Old Testament. Jonathan was Saul's uh, firstborn son. Saul was the king, the first king of Israel. And as he was the king, uh, Saul, uh, Jonathan was born. He was next in line, royalty. And then over here is this young shepherd boy who killed Goliath. And his popularity is going crazy. And here's the whole countryside saying, my goodness, what if David was king and not Jonathan and all this stuff was going on? But here is the context of the story. Saul, Jonathan, and David. Saul, David comes to Saul to talk to him, the king, and then he meets his son. Here we go. Jump in verse 1 of chapter 18. When they met, after David, and he already finished talking with Saul, the king, then as he walked from there, he met Jonathan, the king's son. There was an immediate bond. It's like when you look at somebody and it's like, you're just cool. There's a, there's a, a, a chemistry, whatever. It's just like, wow. Well, I could really like, anyway. So he finished talking, he found Jonathan, the king's son. There was an immediate bond between them for Jonathan loved David. Whoa. From that day on, Saul kept David with him. He wouldn't let him return home. You're going to stay with me. And Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. He made a solemn pact. Countries make solemn pacts. Those are peace treaties. We will have peace with one another. When two friends make a solemn pact, it is called a covenant. It's deeper than a friendship. It is a commitment. It is a covenant that you will be there for the other person and they'll be there with you. Now, my covenant group is going to be meeting this week. I've been talking about them a lot. Oh, I, just, I, I love those guys. We're going to meet this week. And uh, this is, again, this is like crazy. This is like 29 years we've been getting together. Some of those guys are getting old. <laughs> oh, 29 years ago, over 29 years ago, we were in Inverness in a fish camp in a mobile home. We all piled into this place and spent two, three days together. And it was crazy. But when we first met, you know, and pastors can be competitive. Think about it. They, you know, it's like, okay, how many did you have in church? How many did you have? How many did I have? How many attended your church? How many, uh, you know, how many are in a uh, small group? How many you got in the youth group? How much money you got coming in? Da, 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 all that stuff. And finally, we had to just call a truce. Say, this isn't going to happen. So we had to make a solemn pact. And we had to put our hands in the middle and say, this has got to stop. We've got to be the same. We've got to treat each other the same. So one of the guys, and I don't remember which one it was, came up with this tagline that's been sort of our theme song tagline, and I want to read it together. Everybody needs friends who love you but are not impressed by you. <laughs> I love that. It just like wiped the slate clean. We go by our name. The comp competitiveness leaves. We're committed to one another. If you're committed as a Christ follower, the second thing is you're invested. You have skin in the game. You care about this person. You are there. You're fully in. In fact, as we continue the story, for 1 Samuel, when Saul was trying then, he got jealous of David, and he thought, we got to get rid of him, and he wanted to kill David. So then two chapters later, Jonathan, again, he made the solemn pact with David, saying, may the Lord destroy all your enemies and protect you, watch over you. 
Jonathan made David reaffirm his vow of friendship that we're committed and together. And Jonathan loved David as he loved himself. For you and I to be invested as men, as women, young people, older people, for us to be invested in a friendship means we need to love them as we love ourselves. Now hang on before you get into this selfish kind of love thing. For you and I to love ourselves is to have a genuine, quiet confidence in the saving grace of Jesus Christ who loves you more than anything. And when you understand his love for you and how much he loves you, you think of yourself differently. He loves me. I can love myself. And when I do, then and only then can I genuinely love another person. You can't love others if you don't love yourself. You're just going through the motion. But that healthy, quiet confidence that it's God. In fact, I love how verse 42 at the end of that chapter, that Jonathan said to David, go in peace for we have sworn loyalty to each other in the Lord's name. And the Lord is a witness, a bond between us and our children forever. David left and Jonathan returned to the town. Now, when you think of this, that bond they made, they were committed, they were invested, and the last one, they were vulnerable with each other. Now, this is kind of an uncomfortable, awkward word, but to be vulnerable is to be open, especially for men. We don't like to be vulnerable. We'd rather be defensive and argue and all that kind of stuff because then that's more comfortable. But when you're vulnerable and you're open and you're genuine and you trust and you care and you respect and you're honest, that's what David and Jonathan did. In fact, Samuel, 1 Samuel in 18, back in 3 and 4, when he, Jonathan made, when he made that pact, because he loved David as he loved himself, verse 4, Jonathan sealed the pact by taking off his robe, giving it to David, and together with his tunic, sword, bow, and belt, he gave it to David. What's the big deal? It represented who he was. He is royalty. He is the next in line for the king. And this is a servant, shepherd person, lowliest in his family. And I'm going to be real with you and be honest and vulnerable. I'm going to peel off the robe, the tunic, the power, the status, the authority, the everything in me. And I'm going to hand it to you. We are equal in this. You see, for the layers that we peel off to encourage others, as real as we can be with one another, what layers to peel off? Usually it's our pride or our ego or our importance or whatever, but when you can peel that off and say to somebody, I'm here, and they can say the same to you. As men, as women, whatever, the honesty of the friendship goes to a deeper, genuine level. Committed, invested, and vulnerable. And when we are, that friendship becomes a brother or a sister, the one closer than sometimes family. In fact, uh, 2 Samuel 1, 26, when David learned that Saul... And, and Jonathan were killed in battle. He then said, and this is from the message, Oh, my dear brother, not friend, but Jonathan, my brother now. I'm crushed by your death. Your friendship was a miracle and a wonder. Love far exceeding anything I've known or even hoped for. The genuineness of a Christ follower and the depth of a real, genuine friendship. You see, it goes back to being able to trust in Jesus. As he said to his disciples, how we love others, you first love him. And basically, John 15, remain in me and I'll remain in you. 
And as he said all this, he said, you are my friends if you do what I command. He's telling his disciples, I'm no longer calling you slaves because a master doesn't confide in slaves. I've just confided in you, the Savior of the world. And since I've told you everything, I now you are my friends since I've told you everything the Father has told me. Jesus peeled back the layers and he was as real with them as he is for us. Is this possible to be committed, to be invested, to be vulnerable and truly have these relationships? Yes. And let me give you a couple examples. First of all, tomorrow morning here on campus, we have what's called the MOPs, Mothers of Preschoolers. And and I know many of you, though you're not mothers of preschoolers, you've been mentors and you've been helps and coaches there. Uh, They're going to meet tomorrow. And there's about 100, 80 to 100, somewhere around there. There's a pile of women that show up. And there isn't anybody more lonely and looking for more of a friend than a stay-at-home mom with kids. And and I heard at the last service this loud amen come out of the sun. But really, because they could like need friendship. So anyway, they're all showing up tomorrow, but they sit around tables of eight. And when they sit there at the tables of eight, they get to know each other, and there's a mentor, and there's a guy and the person they talk to. But in the context of that, when they go celebrate joys and tears and all that kind of stuff, but a couple weeks ago, or in this last week, there was a, one of the families went through this horrible crisis. And going through the crisis, uh, our, our, the, and again, I'm going to Brittany um, Whitaker. She's the leader. Brittany is the uh, leader. And all of these moms rallied around the family, the husband and wife and the kids and everybody. They brought them food. They loved to support them. And they're still walking with them through the crisis. But it's what they do because they're committed they're invested, and they're vulnerable. And they know, by the grace of God, we're all here together, and we need to support, love, and care. Now, for those of you that have never been a part of a group, and you're sitting there going, oh, I don't need anybody, and your trinity is me, myself, and I. <laughs> Hang on. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is calling you to connect with one another because it's the way he made you. So if you're men and you like to get together and you want to hang out, maybe you could have one of the most incredible groups and go fishing. (laughs) Some of you probably like to hunt. Some of you like to fish. Some of you you probably even have that little stick and a ball and you go around on the (laughs) uh, golf. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. And next week we'll give you an update on our tournament. But, But in the context of all that, Start with where you are in your age. Start with boomers. Start with you're married. Start with you're single. I want to connect with other people. Put your name down. Put your neighborhood down. I don't care what you put down. This whole parenting class, good grief. Talk about a bunch of people that want to love and care for each other. Parents, especially kids that think they're going nuts. You need help. You know, seriously. I mean, this is a big deal. Amen? That's right. So, but that's where you can be committed, you can be invested, and you can be vulnerable. In fact, throughout all of this, if we learn as we go, snowbirds, I've been on this one for a while, snowbirds. When you, when you come down here and you like just hang out and you like the warm weather, and we do too. <laughs> and when I go back home, I realize why I moved here to Florida. <laughs> and many of you. How many moved because of the cold? Anybody? You moved here because of the cold? Three of you? (laughs) Four, five, six. (laughs) It's too funny. But put down the state where you're from. If you're here for a couple of months, put it down. I'm from Indiana. Maybe you'll meet other people from Indiana or Michigan or wherever. And, And you can connect and you can support. And you can be together and form new friendships. I don't care. Put, put down anything you want. Put your neighborhood down. I already told you that. But anyway, but to come in the, through these classes and all the things we do so you can learn, but you come to connect. You see, it's like you got to stop feeling like you're going it alone and start realizing we're going it together. If the kingdom of God is going to be primary in our world, It's got to be primary in our hearts, and we 
God's children have to come together, and it's only going to happen through that friendship with Jesus Christ, the one who is the truest of all. When we're a friend with him, we're a friend with others. There's a guy named Joseph uh, Scribner, I think it was, Scri Scrivens. He was in Ireland. And years and years ago, uh, helped the poor. He loved to help poor in the cities, different places. And he was engaged. And the day before the wedding, his wife-to-be drowned. Horrible story. Devastating. He moved to Canada, started his life over, and started to, um, uh, and he fell in love again. And he fell in love with, a, with another woman. Beautiful. And before they could get married, she got sick and she died. Both times. Again, devastated. What does he do? But in his, with his mom, who was close to him, he wrote a song. And as he wrote this song, it were the words to what a friend we have in Jesus. And the hope that he had in his friendship with Jesus amidst the horrible losses. That friendship is where we build from others. Amen? Amen? Let's bow our heads. Lord, thank you for the morning and our time to gather. And Lord, as we look at our lives and we're honest with you and ourselves and others, sometimes we just settle in for that illusion of friendships and we think that's just great. But you're calling us to a deeper level, a commitment with one another and a commitment to you and your kingdom. So first of all, Lord, if anybody's here who has truly never invited you into their life, they do not call you a friend because they are just religious, but let today be a day when you say, no, I want to know you, Jesus. I want to know your quiet confidence of peace, forgiveness, and love, and that depth of friendship with you, O oh Lord. And let that be your prayer. Invite him in today. For all of us, as we come, may we understand that depth of friendship with Christ and the call to be, have a friend with others, with commitment, investment, and being able to be vulnerable. We love you, Lord. You're our God. In your holy name, we pray. Everybody said, amen. amen. Let's stand as we sing together.
friend with Christ and a friend to others. As always, the opportunity for you to participate in Holy Communion, understanding that our sins are forgiven in Christ and Christ alone. As Jesus gathered with the disciples, gave thanks to God as he lifted the bread up, gave thanks to God the Father, and then he broke the bread and said, this represents my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And when the meal was over, he took the cup, giving thanks to God the Father. He then said, this represents my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and the many for the forgiveness of sin and the new life in me. As often as we share the cup and we share the bread and gluten-free as well, we remember his life, death, resurrection, and his coming again. May God bless the elements that they would be the body and blood of Christ, that we would be the body of Christ redeemed for the world. As we come and as we go, understanding the call of what it is to be a true Christ follower and a friend to others comes from the friend in Christ. See you on Ash Wednesday, this Wednesday at 6.30. It's usually about a 45-minute service. If you want to come out for that quiet, reflective time, we would love to have you. But as we worship and as we thank our God, we now go with the responsibility of connecting with others. Let's bow. Gracious God, thank you for the morning. As men and women, whether we're married or single, we know you're our God. And Lord, as you have created us and breathed into us life, may we now seek to connect with genuine friendships and relationships in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.